So we said it. Compare the same things in the same way. Let's try this out in the same manner that we did before, because I guarantee you that rule still applies. And I'm going to show you how that rule applies and exactly how you can move forward from here. Watch this. In red, I'm going to highlight the first step. As always, what is it that we want? And it's going to be right here. How many yellow gumballs are there? Everybody, uh, I'm not crazy, right? That says yellow, yellow gumballs, right? We are looking for the number of yellow gumballs. Great. Sounds good. I'm going to say blank yellow gumballs. Right there. Perfect. Cool. Now let's go ahead. I don't have all the context. I don't know the whole story, but at least I know the reason I'm here to begin with is just to count the number of yellow gumballs. That's all I care about. Let's figure out how to do it. So let's look forward to the information here. It says the ratio of yellow gumballs to purple gumballs. Okay, before I even continue, is any number that you are about to see important? Yes or no? Right after reading that, we're looking for yellow gumballs and it says the ratio of yellow gumballs to purple. No matter what we see up next, is it going to be important? Cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, let me let me caution you here because when we read here, it says, again, the ratio, blah, blah, blah. The ratio in a bag is 35 to 42. So, my party people, there are two numbers. We know that one of them corresponds to yellow gumballs. What does the other number correspond to? What does that other number correspond to? Purple, that's right. And we know that because of the way or the rule that we have when it comes to expression ratios. Again, order matters. Just like we said with a proportion, same is true for a ratio. If I say the ratio of you know, yellow to purple is this to this, yellow's first, purple is second. If I say that the ratio of red to blue is one to two, one is red, two is blue. So again, the order matters. And hold up right there, my math party people. Before you continue going, I just really wanted to make sure you understood that our sale is going on right now and you can save up to 100 bucks on any of our plans. So that means if you need a plan for math, English, I got your back. Because the thing is, it's as easy as one, two, three with either one of those. For the math, it's as easy as going through the math basics to get your foundations down. Step two, go through the arithmetic reasoning and math knowledge courses. All of it's lined up for you. And then three, take practice tests to make sure that you're ready for test day. And the same thing goes for English. Step one, I got study guides ready to go for you. Step two, go through the, w, the word knowledge and paragraph comprehension courses. And then step three, practice tests all the way until test day. It is that straightforward. So if you're looking for something that's gonna line everything up for you, no more guessing and confused on what's gonna be on the test, and all you have to do is put in effort, then this is gonna work for you. So if you have any questions, there's my phone number, text me about it, but all you gotta do is click the link in the description of this video somewhere here, sign up, use that code, and get started. I got your back with math party people and English. Let's ace the ASVAB and let's get back to the problem. So if I say right over here, ratio of yellow to purple, 35 to 42, what that means, my party people, is that 35 represents yellow and the 42 represents purple. Before I continue, does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Great. Again, I'm setting you guys up. So for those of you that feel like I'm going particularly slow, trust me, I get it. I've been teaching for a while. Some people think I'm fast. Some people think I'm slow. But I want to make sure that you are getting the main points of the explanation. Because when I anchor in the main points and we get to the big climactic part of it, it's going to make so much more sense because those building blocks are there. We want that understanding to take place, and it can only take place if the fundamentals are there. So here's what we're going to get to right now. We're getting to a very important part. There's one more piece of information that we have not marked down, and that's going to be right here. Hey, there are 110 total gumballs. Confirm with me. Guess in the chat box. That says 110 total. Not 110 yellow, not 110 purple, 110 total. Give me a yes in the chat box if you see that. And this is right here. This part that we're entering is where 50% of people fall off when it comes to proportions because they just don't know the one main idea. Compare the same things in the same way. So 
Everybody think about it like this. In this first sentence, they gave us a ratio. The comparison. Yellow to purple, this is the comparison. Then they tell us we have 110 actual total gumballs. And how many actual yellow do we have? Everyone is safe to say that I'm allowed to compare the 110 total with the yellow that I'm seeking because those are the actual number of gumballs. Is that okay with you? We're looking for the actual number of yellow and we have the actual total. So yeah, that is a very fair move to make on my part. Very fair for me to make. Now, why did I do that? Or why is that such a big deal? It's because of this. My party people, when we take a look at the comparison that we've made, are we comparing the yellow to yellow? Are we comparing yellow to yellow? Yeah, we are comparing yellow to yellow, but overall though, even though we have yellow first and yellow first, are we comparing the same things in the same way? Yes or no? Are we in total here, are we comparing the same things in the same way? No, we're not. Although we do have yellow first, yellow first in both of these comparisons, what's wrong with the second part? Hit me. What's wrong with that second part? What is wrong with this right here? It's yellow to, and then yellow to, what's the problem? So I saw someone say that they, they're not quite sure how to explain. I see a bunch of people answering here, which is great. But I, I saw someone that I want to focus on for a second that said, I don't know how to explain. So when you don't know particularly how to explain, my suggestion is to talk about what is there and then tell whether or not if what's there is what's right. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm comparing yellow to total, yellow to purple. We are not comparing the same things. On one hand, we have total. The other hand, we have purple. We need to do more work to get a proper setup. Yes or no, everybody? Does that make sense? I don't, I don't care if you know what we're supposed to do next. I want to know if you see that there's a problem that we can't continue because they're not compared the same way. Great. Again, the first part is identifying the problem, then it's getting help. So let's go ahead and join Math, uh, Mathematicians Anonymous here and finish this off. How are we supposed to compare the same things in the same way? We're like this. We have 35 yellow, and we have 42 purple. My party people, one question for you. How is it that we're supposed to make a total out of that? Think about it in casual math terms in English. I, I don't want to say common sense, but think about it intuitively. How do we get a total of anything? By adding it all up, right? So if we want to get the purple out of there and actually put in a total, well, let's add in these parts. We have 35 parts yellow to 42 parts purple. If we add this up, we end up getting what, my party people? 77. And that's 77 total. So for anybody who's confused, this is the part you really want to pay attention to. When it comes to uh, proportion questions that have a total in there, you just want to make sure that you know how to get the total for either comparison if you need it. In this case, we did need it. And so we see here that we're going to get rid of the 42 purple and we're going to put in 77 total. Yes or no? Does that make sense? That's the biggest part here. Once we get past this, that's it. We're calculating, we're done. But this is the biggest, biggest step. Just making sure that you're, again, comparing the same things in the same way. So Jack, I wanna caution away from always saying the word always, uh, but in this situation, because we had a part to total, so yellow to total, for the other ratio, we had to create the total. We had to figure out what that was. So yeah, in that case, yes, we did need to just add them up to get that total, yeah. So now that we're here, now that we're here, we're good to go, guys. Now that we're here, we're good to go. Let me just move this up here. Now we can set up our proportion and have a good day. So here's what I'll do. I'll say Y for yellow, and I'll set this up. Let's set it up like we did before, just like we did before. We're going to have Y, and again, it's going to be yellow over 110. So again, this is yellow 
over total. And notice on the right side, we're gonna go ahead and do the 35 yellow to 77 total. Everyone, just to confirm with me, is this proportion good to go? Are we comparing yellow to total? Are we comparing yellow to total? Absolutely. All we gotta do now is just cross, multiply, and divide, with the exception being, just like I warned you in the previous question, this time we gotta do 35 times 110. Everyone, do I look like I have the time to spend calculating 110 times 35? I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, I had four years to develop the best ASVAB program in the nation, so I got time, so shut up. But do I want to do this? No, I absolutely don't. So whenever you can find a shortcut, try to find one. And especially since you're dealing with two fractions, everybody, what's that S word you can always do when it comes to dealing with fractions? Or not always, but a lot of the times, what's that one thing you can do, that S word, when it comes to a fraction? Simplify. And just like you're watching this video for free here on YouTube, I got more free materials for you, my ASVAB party people. We've got a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every single mistake and identify those topics that you need to crush and work on. And on top of that, you can get a free class with me on Zoom once a week. And so that's all included in my free practice test with my free class included. Click that link in this video or in the description, sign up, keep learning for free and keep raising your score. I'm proud of you. Let's keep working hard and let's get back to the problem. You can simplify fractions. And what I want to point out right over here is 35 over 77. I'm a party people. Is there a number that can go into both 35 and 77? Yes, both of them are divisible by seven. So before we get into the whole crazy hoo-ha of cross multiplying and dividing, putting ourselves in a position of doing some pretty extended math and then risking a mistake, Let's actually start by dealing with smaller numbers first. Simplifying first gives us that opportunity. Watch this. If I divide the top and the bottom by both seven, and again, you can do that when it comes to fractions, whatever you multiply or divide the top by, you do the same to the denominator. And so here, this turns into y over 110 equals, everyone hit me, 35 over 77, simplified with the seven out of the way, becomes what? Five up top, and what's on the bottom? Naila, good job getting it first there. Yeah, that would be five over 11. My party people, is this an easier proportion to solve now? Does this give you a, a little bit less of the heebie-jeebies, right? When, it, when you're dealing with smaller numbers, it's always an easier time. And when you can notice how to get to those smaller numbers, that's going to save you time. So last thing we want to do here, you could cross multiply and divide if you wanted to, or you can notice that, hey, if I'm going from 11 to 110, right to left, that's times 10. So if I'm going to go right to left up top, that's going to be times 10. Everyone, 5 times 10 is what? That's going to be 50. So y equals 50. Right there. The other way that you could have gone, if you wanted to cross, multiply, and divide, like I showed you earlier, y times 11 is 11y. Then you can do 110 times 5, which would give you 550. And then from there, that's when you could divide both sides by 11. And when you do that, that's going to give you y equals 50. So either way, either way you could have gone. On one hand, I showed you a shortcut method that you can use for comparison's sake. And on the other hand, I showed you the traditional cross multiplication and division, both of which can still be done after simplifying. And I really recommend simplifying whenever you can. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there, and you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you want to raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe, and raise your score.